Hi there, my name is Rob Jones and I work for Focusrite in the UK. And today I'm going to be talking about Sapphire, which is their brand new uh, Firewire audio interface. Um, <clears throat> so first I'm going to explain kind of the concept of Sapphire. And the idea behind it is, um, if, you, if you think of it as uh, a Focusrite channel strip, um, and what I mean by that is a lot of the functionality you'd get from a channel strip, like um, dynamics, EQ, that kind of thing. Um, along with a high quality input design. Um, and that combines with um, the sort of functionality you'd get um, maybe from a small mixer in terms of uh, creating headphones mixes for artists um, and submixing and all that kind of thing. And you've got all of this combined in the one interface here. Uh, from the hardware here, you see it, it looks like a, a regular, although pretty sexy interface. Um, you've got your gain controls, um, you've got a, a monitor control here, which is quite useful um, combined with the software that this comes with, which I'll come on to in a moment. Uh, and then you've got your, your inputs, just your, your XLRs, line-ins, two headphone inputs, and then two level controls. Um, on the back here, if I flip this round, you've got um, your outputs, all TRS jack and, and labeled uh, one to eight, and then also labeled uh, left, right, center, right, left, right, uh, sorry, right, uh, rear, left, uh, rear, right, etc. And so they're labeled for surround sound. Because um, uh, the Sapphire, obviously, with these eight outputs, is good for 7.1 surround. Um, you've also got SPDIF in and out. So this is actually um, capable of recording a total of four inputs and uh, 10 outputs with the, with the SPDIF. Um, and then you've got MIDI in and out as well. Um, so from the, uh, from the hardware here, and the, just the controls you can see here, you might think, well, how, how do I get access to all these other controls and the, 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 stereo, uh, the channel strip functionality that I was talking about? And, and the answer is the accompanying software. Um, there is, uh, within Sapphire here, uh, onboard DSP. And this powers plugins that run within a free application called Sapphire Control, um, which is like um, the advanced settings of Sapphire. So if I show you Sapphire Control, this is the application that, that comes with Sapphire. Um, over here you've got your uh, input section, which allows you to uh, apply compression, uh, EQ, uh, or that can be amp sim, and then also a fallback reverb. Now the good thing about these plugins is they are multi-mode. So supposing I'm, I'm new to compression, uh, and I'm not sure exactly how you go about compressing a, a drum track or piano or strings. Um, then I merely use this template uh, select slider to select the relevant preset. So if I'm recording piano, I select piano, and then I use this dial here to change the amount. And that will adjust the, the regular compressor controls accordingly. Or if I, if I, if I know how to use a compressor, and I'm, I'm very familiar with that, then I can go out of template mode and then I've got um, access to the full range of standard compressor controls. Uh, and it's exactly the same with EQ. Down here you've got your template mode uh, with instrument presets uh, and then you've got a fully parametric four band EQ down the bottom here. Um, additionally these outer bands at either side um, can be turned into high or low pass filters um, or high or low pass shelf. Sorry, high or low shelf. <coughs> uh, and onto the reverb here. Within Sapphire Control, this is a, um, a fallback reverb. So it's just for uh, a monitor mix for your artists. You'll notice you've got two separate reverb settings here. So if I'm recording uh, vocals on analog input one and uh, guitar on analog input two, I can set totally different reverb settings for each of those. Uh, and it's a very high quality um, reverb sound you've got there. Um, all of these plugins, by the way, run off the onboard DSP, but they also come in VST and AU format, totally separately. So if you're, if you're mixing a track and in, within uh, your sequencer, Ab Ableton, Cubase, whatever it is, um, then you can use any of these plugins uh, within the mix. Um, so it's best to think of Sapphire Control as being uh, an in-between phase between your sequencer or your recording application and the Sapphire hardware. So instead of audio being routed um, directly from the sequencer to 
um, the outputs on the back of the hardware here. Instead, they get routed to the, uh, the playback mix section in the corner of the, the Sapphire Control GUI. And that way you can create a generic mix of playback tracks from your, from your sequencer. So if I know that I've um, sent my vocal to outputs three and four here, I can just bring down the vocal uh, and that'll give me my, my generic mix of playback tracks. Uh, and this will then appear as the playback mix for each set of outputs um, down the bottom here, as you can see it displayed on each set. So this is outputs one and two, three and four, five and six, seven, eight, and nine and 10, the digital. And then you'll notice that this has got a, a headphone symbol, number one and number two. So these are your um, headphone output settings. So if my vocalist is pretty fussy and they decide they don't want a generic playback mix in the headphones, but instead they want their own mix with less guitar, perhaps a, a bit less drums, then I click right there, uh, bring down the guitar, uh, bring down the drums, and then additionally they say, no, I, I want a, more of me in the headphones, um, slightly less of the guitarist that you're also recording, and then I want lots of reverb on myself, then I can turn up the vocals, I can turn down the guitarist that we're recording alongside, uh, and then I can add some reverb to that input. So then I've created a totally custom mix of the inputs and, and also the outputs. And this then becomes um, uh, the input mix on one side, and then the playback mix on the other. And then I use this slider here uh, to blend between the two. So if they want more inputs than playback tracks, then I just move it slightly over to the left there. So you can see how um, this allows you to um, navigate through a fairly complex recording session with complete ease. Um, but it also has other features. It also means that surround sound mixing and playback is, uh, is also incredibly simple. Because I can, I can set up exact mixes of, of tracks from uh, my sequencer using these custom mix facility at the bottom. Uh, I can send completely custom mixes to each set of outputs. And then I, additionally I can control the level of all of these by activating the hardware control button which is this small H here. And then when I adjust the level of the, uh, the monitor level on the hardware, it changes the level as you can see on all of the outputs. So this is excellent for surround sound playback. Um, so that gives you an idea of software control. As you can see, um, it's great for a recording session, it's great for surround sound, it's great for all kinds of applications. You've got these plugins here that run off the onboard DSP, so don't use up any of your CPU. And then you also get four free plugins um, in VST and AU formats for use totally separately as well. So it's a complete bargain. Um, so that's all from me. Thanks very much.